Granny used to tell me all the time Sparks when feet and preparation combine The road been right here all this time But you gotta look with more than your eyes And the small axe Jesse Royal representing for I Just Star Mindset Rich forever Mindset, blessed love, manners and respect One from the item in the divine name of his imperial majesty Emperor Eo Selassie I the first Empress Madam the first Holy Manuel I King Selassie I Ja Rastafari One more day above ground And life is our ultimate position We are live and direct In Ghana Specifically Accra so, and we have one of I have one of my favorite reggae and dancehall artists from out of Ghana. Zena Bridging that you know I've been following for over probably over ten years now. Zen, yeah, watching, following, supporting Zen, the whole Gideon Court family. We have yeah. no other artist than I one. Yeah, Welcome to the Mindset Program again, my lad. It's yes, I bless it, bless it. Don't know. I'm, I'm very happy, and I'm very overwhelmed to, to, to meet I just stars because it's been a while, you know, and, 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 and it's been so long. So let me say I'm very happy to be on the program, Steve. Bless my lad. I'm, I'm happy myself to meet the eye in the flesh. And you know, of the eye on this monumental um, mindset Ghana program, my lad. Yes. Um, there is one of the foundation artists um, yeah. within reggae and, and, and dance in Ghana. Um, they are still around, they are still making good, positive music. What, what, what motivates the eye? What, what keeps the eye going to, you know, to pursue? you know keep pursuing this reggae music well um i would say it is the passion you know just just passion for music um let's just take reggae out for a while passion for music is what have kept i want to you know, from them time to this time doing music and then understanding my mission in the music you know I, 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 my basic mission wasn't for business and it was to preach love, was to preach peace, was to preach unity, equality, as Rastafari said in music. So um, whether I make it financially or not, I still have to be on a mission. So this is one of the basic reasons why I'm still doing the music and I'm still going to do the music. Yes, I, Rastafari. So the eye basically is a messenger the, the music and you have a message yes to sir. missionary artist yes i yes i um as i said the, 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 the eye is one of the foundation <coughs> artists in that i know from from in Ghana. Um, a few years ago i remember you you you, you, you gone through a very serious rd where fire burned down your studio yeah um talk to me about that experience then yeah. well you know one of the main tools of an artist is a studio yeah and then that was what was really getting us going and then one day we just woke up and we found the whole studio burnt down and 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 we couldn't even suspect anybody you know you know so it was it was a very bad feeling but then um within a, a few uh, a months we had people who understood our journey they understood what we were we were doing and most of them offered a studio to work some for free some for discounted booking fees and and for me i i feel all this is, is, is the work and it's just bringing up all them all of them together to, to to help make our work easy and also reach the destination that we want to reach. Yeah, Rastafari. Um did, did, did your 
you feel like during that process that you know you, you, you wanted to give up on the music working so hard over and over over the years and you know putting so much work and now you know you, you, you just see all your hard work in terms of your equipment and you know things them that your boy just gone on the gym like that did you ever feel like say boy you know you're gonna just give up on this yeah at, at one point I had two feelings, you know, so I had to choose, like two choices. Um, um, do I have to give up or do I have to pick it up as a challenge and then build on it to do other greater things? Because I lost, I lost a lot of songs, I just asked. A lot of songs that unreleased songs and then some I haven't memorized the, uh, um, the lyrics. So I have to rewrite. So that that brings in the second part then i have to write songs that have to be more than those ones i lost so then i pick it up as a challenge rather than um as something that will lead uh, me to stop music so then by and by i i started doing songs which were greater because from then i released that the, we are god's album and then I released Cornerstone album. I released Trust in the Lord, and and these albums have greater songs, greater compositions. And then when you listen to those lyrics, you realize a big difference from when I was younger and then when I I, I got to that level. So um, there is a blessing in in in, in, in this guy. yeah so everything for real because. Basically, what we get from that is like a release from that time. It's like a release of four, five. Albums. Yes, albums, and then it was like I was trying to match up to something because of those things that I lost. So I was just doing production by production always. Because of I, the loss of the songs and and the loss of all those lyrics, I had to do a lot to match up. You know, certain songs I, I couldn't remember, but then I have to write songs to match up those ideas. So I released a lot of singles. I released a lot of albums in in, in that time, and then I, I must say it helped me to stay a bit relevant. You know, and then. A bit up to the time because the, the industry here is not that easy you need to be always releasing singles to stay relevant yeah for real for real for real, for real. so how has the, the, the challenge been since you know since that serious rd has been winning yeah right now the challenge i'm gonna ask yeah. You know, the challenge that, you know, the I am winning, you're persevering through the challenge. Yeah, I am I am winning here you know, because as as my name goes, I won. Mm -hmm. It's I not won. just a name, it's an acronym. Yeah. I win always naturally. Yeah. So I am winning. You know, I am winning. We, we we have some challenges. I will not boast of it because it's a challenge that every artist goes through. You know, financial challenges. You know, when you don't have a record label an established record label standard to get yourself signed on to i am an indie artist from them time to now i just start doing that so certain times the biggest challenge come from the financing of, of the whole project the whole music because the competition now is not easy out there you know so we are really trying to match up to the competition and if some of the messages that we, we we give out is even stronger than some of the messages some artists you know not to discriminate but then because we don't push money into what we do most of our works don't really travel so that is one of the biggest challenge but then any other challenge is just yeah just like a normal challenge for us yeah um is, is, is there anything 
in Ghana that um, is set up to really aim reggae artists in terms of you know getting getting their music out there. Is, is there anything? Is there any farmer farm scheme set up? Not that I know of until I, I heard of the, 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 the Ghana Reggae Dance All Awards mm. which is still um, about to happen you understand we did have an award scheme um, some time ago BS Awards but it, it wasn't able to sustain itself I don't know because I feel that anybody who wants to host an award for reggae music don't have to only have a business mindset you have to have a passion for the reggae have a passion for the movement you understand so i think that's why that award scheme couldn't last so this scheme we hope it, it, it is passionate about the reggae and dancehall in ghana and also the artists doing it so that it can last you understand um in our main award scheme we only have one category Wow. So we haven't been appreciated enough over the years in Ghana looking at the contribution that reggae music have done over the years um, We shouldn't have only one category True. Yeah, we should have more than one category in our national award scheme. So I think um, we are still trying to drag reggae back but reggae is always the leader, you know, reggae is always in front of, of all the journal you know so this is, is, is a bit of advice to our industry you know we need to place emphasis on reggae music dancehall music and and, and 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 push it push more money because that is where most of the talent is coming from now if you hear a new talent in Ghana if it is not reggae dancehall then it might be hip-hop most of our indigenous music here is being developed with the foreign kind of genre of music you understand so we still need more attention for reggae in ghana um with with, with afrobeats and the search do you think reggae is on um a regress type of vibes in ghana or on the worst stage well, reggae have always been in the system. Like most of the time that you hear reggae being played on radio is election time when the whole country is tensed. And you start hear people play Bob Marley, play Lucky Doby, play most of the softer vibes of reggae music which preach love and peace. And then you find out the moment election is over then the style of playing changes yeah so I would not say that they see reggae to be probably not commercial but then they just don't want to make it number one yeah they just don't want to make it number one but it's, 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 it's a music genre that is so influential to an extent that even Ghana gospel music have reggae element in it. Most of the Ghana gospel music are played based upon reggae rhythms. Yeah, so they might be free of the music. situation behind our control. Um, I won. Yes, you, sir. You, you, you released an album late last year. Yeah. Yeah? Coming yeah. to the end of uh, 2022. Yeah. Talk to me about that new project. Yeah, man. Well, um, it was a 15-track project. Mm -hmm. And then the title was Rainbow. Why uh, Rainbow? Why Rainbow? Because, um, 
you know, I was just trying to um, preach to my fans um, a word of hope because rainbow stands for hope. The first time that the rainbow was um, being spoken of in, in the scriptures was in the Bible, in the days of Noah, after the flood, that a God gave him the rainbow as a sign of hope. So, same thing in my career and also in, the, in, 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 this, in the sphere of reggae dance and music in Ghana, I am just giving that album out as a sign of hope that my fans and all who listen to it should not give up in life. So Rainbow has 15 good songs, dancehall, reggae in there, we have Afrobeat in there and it's out on social, um, all the digital media shops and you can get it to download. Yeah, and it features three artists, um, one from Liberia called um, AK Feeling, um, one from uh, Rwanda, and then the other one from US, ESI. And then we have two local artists on it, five artists in, in all. And, and so far, how oh, oh, oh the album is doing so far? So far on, on the digital market, it's doing well. That's it's doing true. well because um, I, I, I do like the streams and then I do love the fact that the, the, the greater statistics is not coming from Ghana, it's coming from the Europe and them places. That means that we are reaching beyond where we are. Yes, sir. Um, the future for reggae and dance uh, um, in, 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 in Ghana? Yeah, the future is bright, you know. Um, I think by and by, the reggae dance would eventually become one of the main journeys in Ghana. Because looking at the fact that Rocky Dauni is one of one of our biggest reggae artists in Ghana and also one of the artists being the first to be nominated in the Grammys. You understand? It wasn't a high life artist, it wasn't a hip life artist, it was a reggae artist. So that alone should tell you that the future of reggae in Ghana is, is bright. You know? It's just that like I said earlier on, they must fight the music. You know, they have to just allow it to play its part, yes. Um, Stone Boy said something um, last year about the origin of, of reggae music and uh, that it, it's African origin. Um, I agree with him. Where, where does that statement sit with you? <laughs> well, this issue, this issue is a very delicate issue which I've been going on. Um, I think uh, my part is that reggae is, 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 is an element borrowed from all places and the majority is from Africa because reggae have, me know it have calypso, it, 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 it have some elements from, from, from the West End because looking at the instruments, you understand, you can say certain instruments were uh, uh, invented in Africa you know so but the most part of it is Africa because reggae was brought up from Jamaica by people who have an origin in Africa so with that with that mentality alone I think it have to be accepted that most part of, of the origin of reggae is, is African element yeah. yes I totally agree with that and um, Rastafari, you know, that's kind of where I see up the reasoning. Um, Rastafari, see, there is a Rastafari bridging. See, um, how, how, how do you see Rastafari now um, in the 21st century in Ghana? Well, um, 
this is a broad question, you know. I just asked, yeah. and I can only speak my bit of it and how I see it. You understand? Um, uh, the, the, the vibes used to be more stronger, you know. It it used to be more direct and strict than now. You understand than now because um, we have people that are determining the kind of even the message that some of the Rastafarians have to put in their music in terms of you being signed to a, 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 a management you understand so and and this I speak out of experience so for me I think that um, it's been diluted a bit and then on the other advan advantage part we're still having a lot of youth running into Rastafari right now, you know, compared to the those times in the 90s. Car, it was seen to be rebellious, to be Rasta. But now in every every vicinity, every community, most of the youth them have dreadlocks, most of the youth them smoke the herbs, you know. Most of the youth them are preach Rasta, them are, them, are, them are listen to reggae music, you know. So um, yeah, this is this is my take on it. You think it, 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 it has become more accessible, uh, more accepted? In yeah, the... more accepted because in do in the nineties, um, 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 you would have faced a lot of problems to, to carry dreadlocks, but now. Most youth carry dreadlocks and, and, and it's even their parents' idea to do that, you know, because it's fashion, but most don't see it only fashion, they see it to be going back to the African identity, who they are and who they, they, they will look if they start living natural. So for me, it's more open now, Rastafari is more accessible now, you know. But the vibe is not strict like in the 90s. Yep. Blessed, blessed. Yes, I want um, It's been an honor and it's been a pleasure talking to the eye. Um, just before we go, where people can find you, how they can yep. get in touch, um, the eye social media and, uh, and, and so on. Yeah, man. You know, I just started before I should have. Make the people know it's Iwan Suini right now. It's not only Iwan. So when you go on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, just type Iwan Suini. And then all digital platforms, iTunes, Amazon, Deezer Music, Spotify, just type Iwan Suini. YouTube, yeah man, I'm everywhere. You can get to see my performances, my concert, my musical videos. Yeah, and then watch out for more. This year we are dropping another album. You know I just start. We drop album on every birthday. Smash that subscribe button. See you on the next video. I just start the mindset.